Hey folks, Dylan here. How's everybody doing out there? This week, I want to talk about one of the most delightful and successful things that has happened on the web in the last few years. I want to talk about Wordle. Now, like a lot of you folks, around January 2022, I started noticing something weird popping up in my Twitter feed. Um, little posts of yellow and green squares. Just a few of them at first, and then more, and then more, until finally you click through to see what all the fuss was about, and you have a go, and you find that it's this weirdly, kind of wonderfully addictive word game. And before long, we'd hit a point where it felt like just about everybody I know was posting their Wordle scores online every day. Wordle was something truly beautiful. It was created by a guy called Josh Wardle, who used to work at Reddit. If any of you remembers The Button or an art project called Place, uh, those were also created by Josh. But Wordle wasn't created as a product or as a prototype or anything. Wordle was a gift. He made it as a present for his partner, who enjoyed solving word puzzles, and published it on the web in January 2021, and he told a few friends about it, and they told some of their friends. And in December 2021, it was a Wordle player in New Zealand came up with the idea of posting their daily results as a little grid of coloured emoji tiles. And Josh liked that idea so much that he built it into the game, and now everybody playing Wordle could share their daily progress on social media with one click, and boom! That's how you go viral. In January 2022, over 2 million people were playing Wordle every day. You know how much it costs for two million people to play Wordle? Well, let's work it out. Wordle, the entire game, was published as four files. This is what the HTML for Wordle looked like back in 2022 when the game first went viral. The entire game is less than 200 kilobytes. There is about 40 lines of HTML code, most of which is open graph meta tags, so that people sharing links on social media get nice previews and stuff. There's 100 lines of CSS, that's about another 3 kilobytes. There's a PNG image, that's not even part of the game, it's just there to use as an icon when you add the shortcut to your phone's home screen. And then there's as main.js, which contains the game logic and the entire word list. Seven years worth of daily Wordle games, 188 kilobytes. Wordle made fantastic use of browser APIs. The game itself was built as a web component. It's not React or Angular, there's no frameworks or plugins or anything. It's just JavaScript code talking directly to the browser's built-in component APIs. All of your scores and your streaks, they were maintained in local device storage. So there's no backend, there's no database, no logins, no cookies, there's no security to worry about. If you play Wordle once, 200k of data gets stored on your phone, and in theory, you can play every day for seven years, even if you never connect to the internet again. So, how much does it cost to serve 200 kilobytes to 2 million people? Well, 2 million times 200k, that's about 400 gigs. So let's say that we stuck the whole thing up in an Amazon S3 bucket and published that as a website. Traffic from S3 to the internet costs about 9 cents per gigabyte. So 2 million people times 200 kilobytes times 9 cents per gigabyte is $36. Now, $36, that's not nothing. There's people all over this planet for whom $36 would be a life-changing amount of money. But there's also a lot of people who will spend $36 on dinner or a round of drinks without even thinking about it. And remember, you know, once you've played Wordle once, the whole thing is in your phone's browser cache. You don't need to download it again tomorrow. So for a dollar, you can get another 50,000 people playing Wordle. So if everybody on the planet started playing Wordle, it would have cost about $120,000 in transfer costs. And that's a worst case scenario. If you use the right caching headers, you find that other people's internet providers are going to help you out, because the files aren't going to change. Once you accept that Wordle is finished, you can stick the files in a bucket with a header that says, yes, please cache this literally forever. And then if one person in Australia using, say, the Telstra mobile network plays Wordle, Telstra servers could go, hey, let's hang on to this. And then the next million people in Australia who start playing Wordle, they aren't getting their copies from your Amazon bucket anymore. They're getting them from Telstra. The cost to you is zero. Now, I'm going to round the numbers down a little bit here. I'm going to say that in the grander scheme of things, anything that you can share with 50,000 people for a dollar is basically free. But 
It only works because it's free. You know, that might sound a bit tautological, but you think about it. Imagine if Wordle hadn't been free. Imagine if Josh Wardle decided that he didn't want to make a profit, he just wanted to make enough money to cover his own costs. Now, the first problem you hit is that for one person to play Wordle costs $0.00002. You ever tried to pay someone $0.00002? The lowest valued currency in the world right now is the Iranian rial. The uh, exchange rate, official exchange rate, is about 42, 43,000 rials to the US dollar. So maybe instead we could just charge folks one rial to play Wordle. Except uh, the smallest coin they have is 250 rials. So yeah, forget it. We're, we're gonna have to turn a profit with this thing. Let's say Wordle costs a dollar for a year and you can pay with a credit card. Now, I use a company called Stripe to do all my payment processing. Uh, I like Stripe, they're pretty good. They take 2.9% plus 30 cents of each transaction. So someone pays a dollar, we end up with 67 cents, which, yeah, that's cool, we can work with that. Two million people times 67 cents, that's about $1.3 million. But we've created a huge headache for ourselves because now that Wordle costs a dollar, we need to make sure that people can't play it for free, otherwise, What's the point in paying? And only people who've paid their dollar get to play, which means we need to know who they are, which means we need to keep a database somewhere of all the people who have paid to play, and suddenly we're responsible for a database with a few million people's login details. So now we need to get some security. So we need to hire somebody who knows about security and data protection and the GDPR, and are we going to have to, you know, incorporate and report that revenue and pay taxes on it? So we need an accountant, and uh, oh, yeah, all the people who paid for it, they're going to want a kind of receipt. So we'll need to set up an email confirming they've paid, which means we need a mail relay that can send a million emails a month. And we need a developer to build the code that handles all those emails. And suddenly, you know, we've got this huge list of things that we need to do and people we need to hire and infrastructure that we'll need to provision also that we can charge a dollar. And we're thinking, you know, wow, maybe maybe a dollar per person is not actually going to be enough to cover it. You folks probably know what actually happened. Wordle was acquired by the New York Times later the same year. Josh Wordle actually said the main reason he sold it was that Wordle clones started popping up on various app stores with advertising and in-app purchases. And uh, he said, selling to the New York Times was a way for me to walk away from that. I didn't want to be paying a lawyer to issue cease and desists on a game that I'm not making any money from. Now. Wordle is still fundamentally the same game, and it's still free to play, but a lot of what made it so wonderfully elegant in the first place is gone. It's funded by advertising now, which means instead of 200 kilobytes, it's over 4 megabytes of advertising and tracking code. It isn't a web component anymore. I've no idea why. I can only assume that in the somewhere in the process of adding all the advertising and analytics, somebody decided to just replace it with regular JavaScript and HTML. And to play Wordle now, you've got to create an account. And all your streaks and your scores, they're stored on a back-end server. And sure, you know, that means if you lose your phone, you don't lose your Wordle streak. But I can't help thinking that, you know, to me, the whole thing just feels like a bit of a step backwards. Now, if you want to know more about how Wordle was created, Josh Wardle gave a fantastic presentation at Figma's Config 2024 conference a few weeks ago about uh, all the key decisions that went into it. Uh, the talk is up on YouTube, the link is in the description, so uh, you can go and check that out. But from me, folks, that's all for now. As always, thank you for tuning in. I hope you found that interesting. You'll have a good week, you look after each other, and I'll catch you next time.